His holy name. Sing like never before. Oh, my soul, I worship your holy name. The sun comes up, it's a new day dawn. It's time to sing your song again. Whatever may pass and whatever lies before me, let me be singing when the evening comes. Bless the Lord, O oh my soul, O oh my soul. Worship His holy name. Sing like never before. Oh my soul, I worship Your holy name. Your rich in love and Your slow to anger. Your name is great. And your heart is kind For all your goodness I will keep on singing Ten thousand reasons for my heart to find So bless the Lord, oh my soul Oh my soul Worship His holy This is the day that you have made. Truly, may we stop and just resonate with your love, your kindness. May we use this day well in your service. May we show love and kindness to all that we meet. May we bring your light into this world. Amen. So before we're seated, let's just say the Lord's Prayer. Our Father, who art in the heavens, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, as in heaven, so upon the earth. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our debts, as we also forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory 
forever. Amen. Please be seated. Would you grab me one of those order of services? I don't have it up the front here. Each month we, in, in Abiding in the Vine, we look at a new virtue, and you, you'll hear me say this again and again, because we need to hear it. Virtue itself, virtue is the Lord. So when we say love, we're talking about the Lord. Joy peace. Each one of these virtues in some way reveals something to us about God, about who He is. If you look carefully in sacred scripture, you'll, you'll see this term, the high call in Christ Jesus. Now we know from the writings of Swedenborg that every soul is created for heaven. Yes, every soul is created to find a place in heaven. But does every soul end up in heaven? This is the choice the Lord gives us. And it's the same too, even as we walk with the Lord, it's the same to with the high calling. Some may choose to live a good life. Some have a real love and affection for truth. And some have a love for goodness itself. The very high call of God is none other than a relationship with Jesus. That intimate relationship. Not where we, we have a a relationship at a distance, but one where he's very much involved, very organically involved in our life. Today we're going to look at the virtue honour, but I want you to think about what is honour? What really is honour? Because we have it, one of the most difficult virtues for me to really think about and to meditate on and to prepare a service on. Honour. What really is honour? And I think part of the reason I struggled with this is because we live in a world that is so, so driven by man's idea of what honour is, isn't it? So if you had dignity, someone very famous, invite you to their wedding, you might go, I feel really honoured to be invited. Or you might go, that dignity is very honoured to have me at their wedding, isn't it? I mean, this is, this is the kind of the dichotomy of the human condition we find ourselves in. What man says is honourable is really very different to what the divine shows us is honourable. I also struggled to find a living example. I always want, when we do Abiding in the Vine, I want to bring us a, a living example of honour. Last month we looked at honesty and I chose Daniel. Here he is, standing at the window after the edict. You shall not worship anyone but Nebuchadnezzar. And he, he couldn't but be honest. He could have shut his windows, he could have privately continued to worship the Lord, but he chose not to, even though he knew it was going to cost him. So when I think about honour, of course, I can't help but, but once again think of Daniel. Because here is a man who was put into a lion's den, his life was put at risk by none other than King Nebuchadnezzar. And yet, if you follow his story, he honourably serves Nebuchadnezzar the rest of his days. Really honourably does it. Gives him counsel, advice, stays by his side the rest of Nebuchadnezzar's life. I think that's very honourable. But going to a, a, you know, a, an example, a living example of honour, I struggled. I'm sure every one of us could come up with an example of someone that's been honourable in our life, or even a dignity or someone famous. I struggled, I struggled, and about a week ago, I finally settled on something, and I was surprised at what I settled on. I actually chose, of all things, an actor. An actor. Isn't that interesting? I mean, you th think, th think about any time you've seen a movie and you're really drawn to that main character, and you couldn't help liking the actor because of the character they presented, isn't it? And yet, it's really just a person pretending. And then you, you, know, you wouldn't follow gossip. No one here would follow gossip. But you know, if you did follow the gossip columns, people will tell you, oh, I worked with that actor. 
I'll never do it again. And maybe if you were reading the Gospel of Colin, you might go suddenly one of your heroes was, was shattered. There is that saying, isn't there? Don't meet your heroes because you're going to be disappointed. And of course, truly, there is none like the divine. There is no hero like Jesus, is there? Really. But I, honestly, I was very impressed. I have been. I've watched this man's life over the years. and very, very impressed. So let's go there. I don't think my clicker wants to work. Keanu Reeves. I was wondering if you might think I was going to put up... Uh... Oh, you struggle when you say <laughs> Keanu Reeves. You may or may not know him. Some may know him from those, you know, silly adventures. Bill and Ted. He actually talks about it. He, he had this recurring nightmare. On my gravestone, they're going to write, he played Ted. You know, this... <laughs> if you've ever seen him, you'll understand why. But Keanu Ke Reeves, right? I mean, back in 1993, he lost one of his closest friends at the time. River Phoenix from an over overdose. Around that same time, he was actually playing in a movie as well called Little Buddha. And I wonder how much that movie impacted this man, Little Buddha. Something has impacted this man's life because to me, he's the real deal. Okay. A actors, movie stage set producers, people that have anything to do with him, they all say the same thing. And they use words like this. Most people say they're overwhelmed by the kindness of this man. People have spotted Keanu Reeves sitting in the gutter. I'm not looking for attention. Sitting in the gutter with a homeless person sharing a meal saying, tell me about your life. He'll pull over on the side of the road if anybody's broken down. He doesn't even own a car. He still prefers to travel via subway. And where he lives in New York is a very, very modest apartment compared to movie stars. So modest. He had this birth, this happened a few years ago, he had a birthday party and he went out. When he came back, uh, he had, he had organised a security, he has to have security, to let people in at the right time. The security guard wouldn't let him back in. Didn't know who he was. So he stood with the rest of the crowd in the rain for 20 minutes. He was just, he, this is how he thinks. This is the kind of, he thinks like this. This is happening for a reason. So he stays with the people out there in the rain. You or I want. I probably would have gone, hey, I own this apartment, or the one up there. Don't you know who I am? But he, he took it in his stride and just went, no, this is where I'm meant to be, to stay there. But back in 1993, this is where a string of tragedies happens in Kian's life. He, he loses his best friend, River Phoenix, who, who dies of overdose, drug overdose. A number of years later, he meets his sweetheart. They fall in love very quickly. They have a child beautiful little girl, Ava, she's stillborn. And it struck him and his partner so much that they separated. They couldn't cope. They separated, but stayed friends. Two years later, he's heavily working on the Matrix movies. Does anybody know those movies? They woke up a generation of people. The young people were watching that going, I resonate with this movie. You know, there's a veneer to reality, isn't it? We know that. Spiritual people know that. There's a veneer to reality. And that movie, but while in that movie, um, his partner, I've forgotten her name, but she got in a car accident and died. And he was so straught, distraught that he stopped doing the movies for a moment, uh, for a short period, went and did her funeral. A few months later, he finds out his sister's got cancer. And a lot of people don't know that he actually has spent millions of dollars on a very private fund for children and cancer. He's given a lot of his money away. He's worth probably 360 million. But the amount of movies that he's done have grossed over 2.3 billion. He's been in that many movies. And this is a funny thing, right? And I'm happy to say this about Kian. He's not a good actor. He's not a great actor. But he is a great person. People love working with him. They just find him such an inspiration. And that's why he gets role after role after role after role. And he does his best. But he's a beautiful man. People like, word like kindness is what they'll use. Humility. Gratitude, you know, he'll, he'll get off a set and he'll say, you guys have worked so hard. Come on, I'm going to go buy you, this would happen all the time, I'm going to go buy you lunch. And he take this, all the, the workers on set off and buy them lunch. And this is something about Kian is that he's always got his eyes on other people. He's always looking at other people and what's important to them. Doesn't want the attention on himself. That's what I find admirable about the guy. You know, most movie stars, 
Uh, other people use the word like solitude. They'll see him be very, he's a very introverted young man. Oh, introverted man, I should say. He's not young anymore. 55, very introverted. But then another word they use is positive. Positive loneliness. Because he'll sit quietly and think about the world around him. A deep thinker. A couple of photographs I pulled off the internet. People just caught, you know, paparazzis out there catching photographs of Keanu. That's how he dresses every day. He'll get out there and he'll sit lonely. He'll sit quietly on a bench and have something to eat. He's not attention seeking like a lot of movie stars will. All right. There he is, all dressed up, ready to go. Okay. I've always felt a bit alone and isolated from other people. I did a lot of pretending as a child. It was my way of coping with the fact that I didn't feel like I fit in. I think he was five, six, his father took off. Just gone one night. Didn't hear from him for like 10 years. Nothing. Not a, not a letter, not a phone call, nothing. <clears throat> Talking about not fitting in, this is what he says next. Says, I've always felt like I'm not from, from this generation. I just live in it. Because the way my mindset differs from the majority, you'd think I come from a different dimension. That's why I keep things to myself, because a lot of people won't understand me. Now, I can really relate to that, because if, you, if you're a spiritual person, I know you're here today because you're a spiritual person. You be honest with yourself. Do you really feel like you fit in? Most of us feel like we're square pegs in round holes, don't we? I mean, you know how to fit in. You know how to talk about sport and weather and all the good stuff. But there's always this feeling of, I'm just, just not interested in that stuff. People going on about that, and I'm not interested in it. It doesn't, I feel like I'm missing, my, my tribe is missing. Don't, don't we, don't we often feel, spiritual people feel that way, don't we? It's true. Just a few more quotes. I don't want people, I don't want to be a part of a world where being kind is a weakness. Isn't that a beautiful thought? If you've been brutally broken, but still have the courage to be gentle to others, other living beings, then you're a badass with a heart of an angel. So what he means there is, you're not gonna let people push you around in life, but you've learned how to keep your own internal integrity, isn't it? You know, it seems to be that you either, you either stand up for yourself or you're a pushover. But there is a middle path. There's that middle path. Now, I'm not sure about this next quote. No, this one is, yeah, sorry. Makes me think very, uh, very um, Jungian, this one. Positive energy brings good feelings. Dark energy often means harm. But the destruction in dark energy is also a subtle aspect of construction. Like how even forest fires have their benefits. Sometimes enemies are our best teachers. People can learn from their mistakes. Destruction sometimes means rebirth. It's a, it's a deep thinking man here. When you truly understand karma, then you realize you are responsible for everything in your life. It's incredibly empowering to know that your future is in your hands. And I've read other places where Keanu is, really believes we're all connected. So he has this embodied practice of I'm treating you, I don't care who you are, I'm treating you with love and respect and kindness because we're connected. And I don't want to talk about me, I want to talk about you. And he practices it, and that's what I find admirable. I mean, how deep is his spirituality? Is he a Christian? I don't know these things. But I find this admirable. You know, I find someone that everybody is moved by their kindness, by his kindness. I find that admirable. Especially when you consider he's, he's now one of the world's most famous actors. He's been in more movies than, probably, than, than, than most and has given a lot of it away. Now, I'm not 100% sure about this quote. There's questions about it, but I liked it so much I'm going to put it in anyway. I cannot be a part of a world where men dress their wives as prostitutes by showing everything that, we, that should, would be cherished. Everything that should be cherished. Where there is no concept of honour and dignity and one can only rely on those when they say, I promise, I promise I'll do it. It's quite a good quote, quote isn't it? Now, I don't know if it was him. Uh, there's questions about whether he really said that or not. The rest I know for sure I checked uh, his, but it's a good quote. It's always wonderful to get to know women 
with the mystery and the joy and the depth. If you can make a woman laugh, you are seeing the most beautiful thing on God's earth. Isn't that lovely? It shows you know, his attitude about women. It's, it's not, they're not something, they're not an object. They're a creation of God. Another one on love. Falling in love and having a relationship are two different things. Here's one more quote, and then we're going to move into the, uh, into, the, into the rest of the service. I dream of a day where I can walk down the street and hear people talk about morality, sustainability, and philosophy instead of the Kardashians. And if you don't know who the Kardashians in, you've been spared. <laughs> okay. Yeah, you've been well, spared. I know the name, but I don't yes. know who they are. People talk about them all the Big time. Big TV celebrities in America? Yeah, I, I live under a rock. I really, I'm glad I do. I like your rock. I might live there too. <laughs> it's good. All right. So look, I, I just, you know, there are times after looking into Kian's life where, I, life where I've gone into a situation and I've gone, well, I know what Jesus would do. But how would another red-blooded human being handle that? Well, he'd focus on the other person. He'd be kind. He'd be grateful for them. He'd be humble with them. It's very encouraging. Sometimes, you know, you've probably heard me say this story before about the father, it was a friend actually. He was trying to put his son to sleep, a little, little boy. And the son comes and wakes the dad up and says, I can't sleep. And he takes him back and tucks him into bed and says, prays with him, says, you know, look, God's with you. You're right. Goes off to bed, back to bed. The son comes a few minutes later and stirs his dad, oh, dad, I can't sleep. And it happens three times. And on the third time, he's tucking his son in and said, son, you know God is with you. He says, yeah, Dad, but I want God with skin on. Hmm? I want God with, isn't that Jesus? I want God with skin on. A beautiful little child said that. I want God with skin on. Sometimes we need a hero in life that you can see is living a life of integrity, that takes their principles and values and actually practices them, not just pretends to practice them, which is why I've struggled with this virtue, honour. Because anybody that I point out and say is honourable, are they? Or are they honourable to our face and living very differently? We don't know. It's very hard, isn't it? But again, people say there's always this calmness around Kian. They just feel calm and relaxed and peaceful. And when, you, when, when you're a young boy and you're doing a role like Little Buddha, that's got to leave an impression on you, isn't it? You know, I think I'll Proverbs 20, verse 7. Yes, Proverbs 20, verse 7. I, I can't remember. Proverbs 20. Uh, I mean, it's about integrity anyway. About integrity. I can't think of it, but it always stands out for me, that, yeah, that beautiful. verse. It's about a man with integrity. Integrity, and it, it, he's blessed, and so his, his children are after him. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, we did integrity about a year and a half ago. It was a beautiful virtue, isn't it? Integrity. Okay, so okay, would you start by reading for us and get us thinking about honour? I'm going to make sure today that by the time we're finished, you'll be sure about what honour is. But I hope you've given it some thought and gone, hmm, what exactly is it? What, what is it to honour? What is it to be honoured? Definition of honour. High respect, great... Oh, no, no. Okay, would you read the front? The front? Oh, sorry. That's okay. But you can read that later too, if you like. <laughs> honor is <clears throat> honor is a virtue that surpasses respect and nobility. This virtue requires no external prompt or inducement. A person who behaves honorably does so because it is the right thing to do. Honor belongs to all who live from a virtuous character, seeking truth and goodness. When we live a life according to the divine order. We honour our God-given abilities and use them to create purpose and meaning for others. We do not seek to fulfil our lusts which brings disorder. Instead, we seek the genuine use of service and community. In this, we demonstrate to all that we are trustworthy and responsible children of God. We do not shy away from our duty and we embrace sacrifice when necessary if it benefits the lives of others. Mm -hmm. And when I searched honour in the writings, Swedenborg had a, a lot to say about it, and most of it was negative. 
most of it was negative. Because he was talking about how people crave honour or, or, or run after honour and how it becomes a trap for our ego. But there were some beautiful passages where he talks about honour in relation to God. And that's where it is important. Now think about this, right, before we continue. Honour is really just one step below worship. Really, isn't it? It's a big thing to show someone honour. You're not worshipping them, but you are admiring them. You know, it's one step below worship. And worship, for me, I think of worth shape. The more you uh, shape and value money, the more you're worshipping it. Or whatever. Whatever it is that you shape and give value to, you're worshipping. So honour, one step below. But it is right that we show honour to each other, isn't it? And we're going to find out why, because it has a lot to do with use. It has a lot to do with use. But go on, Gay, let's be taming our life. Take a moment to examine your life. Uh, definition. Oh, no. Can you imagine a world without honour? Sorry. <laughs> how would such a wor world, it should be world there, function? Now consider how much genuine honour brings into, genuine honour brings into our lives. You know, when a little child runs to mum's arms and says, I love you, mum, that's a kind of honour. Go on, Gay, keep, keep going with definition now. High respect, great esteem, the quality of knowing and doing what is morally right, something regarded as a rare opportunity in bringing pride and pleasure, a privilege. And synonyms? synonyms, distinction, privilege, glory, tribute, kudos, cachet, Prestige, fame, renown, merit, credit, importance, illustriousness, notability, <clears throat> respect, esteem, approbation, integrity, honourableness, honesty, uprightness, ethics, morals and morality. Well, I hope that's opening the word up for you. The actual roots of the word honour come from the same word as honesty which is fascinating because you were taught you know integrity isn't it chris you know talk about when we have integrity in here that's honorable so it's honorable someone has integrity in here no one else sees it but it's honorable it's something that god can look down upon and smile on but what is it what exactly is honor Antonyms. I love antonyms because they kind of, you know, mountain versus valley. The opposite tells us so much about, you know, what it is. Blame. Hmm, blaming people is the opposite of honour. Criticism. Disbelief. Disclaimer. Dishonour. Disregard. Distrust. Doubt. Ignorance. Hmm. Ill repute. Lowliness. Unimportant, unimportant. That's good, isn't it? So, oh, sorry, sorry, what was it? Unimportance. Unimpo sorry, unimportance. Thank you. So, if something's not important, it's not really worthy of our honor. The more important it is, the more honor we could give to it. Depression. Now, I found that fascinating. The dictionary would define the opposite of honor as depression. Isn't that funny? It's fascinating, depression. Disdain, disobedience, disrespect, heedlessness, neglect, scorn. Now, scorn makes a lot of sense. Shun, shun or scorn. On that note, just grab the card and have a look at what 2 Timothy says. 2 Timothy says at the top of the card, therefore, if people cleanse themselves from what is dishonorable, they will be a vessel for honourable use, set apart as holy, useful to the master of the house, ready for every good work. So honour again, he was starting to see how honour has a connection with usefulness, being a useful person in life. <laughs> Let's continue with the quotes. Uh, do you want to read some of these quotes, Gay? Robin Chalmer? Without integrity and honour, having everything means nothing. Wow. I would prefer even to fail with honour than win by cheating. Wow, isn't that so said Sophocles. How many people would prefer to fail with honour than win by twisting things a little? 
Calvin Coolidge, no person was ever honoured for what he received. Honour has been the reward for what he gave. <laughs> An Icelandic proverb, he who lives without discipline dies without honour. And H.L. Mencken, honour is simply the morality of superior men. Success without honour is an unseasoned dish. It will satisfy your hunger, but it won't taste good. <laughs> so said Joe Paterno. It won't taste good, yes. And David Gemmell, Shield of Thunder. Nothing of real worth can ever be bought. Love, friendship, honour, valour, respect. All these things have to be earned. Mm. <clears throat> and Socrates. The greatest way to live with honour in this world is to be what we be we pretend to be. To actually be what we're pretending to try and be, isn't it? Just authentic. Be authentic. It's tough to be an authentic, like Keanu Reeves says. I want to live in a world where being kind is not a weakness. It's, it's, people value it. But, I'm, but, you know, in the West, if you're kind, most likely you'll be taken advantage of. Isn't it? Not by the people who need you, by everybody else. It's true. Okay, let's look at some scriptural quotes now. Moving from a sort of a natural idea of honour. It's very difficult to get a real natural handle on honour because there's so many confused ideas about what it is. I'm going to the scriptures, Deuteronomy 5.16. Honour your father and your mother. So this is one of the Ten Commandments now. By the way, it's the first commandment in the Bible that God gave us and added a promise to it. If you do this one, you get this. Let's have a look. Honor your father and mother as the Lord your God has commanded you, that your days may be prolonged and it may go well with you in the land with which the Lord thy God giveth thee. And anywhere where people live really, really aged lives, we're talking 130, 120, 130, they've now proven that those cultures value and honor their elders. Anywhere that elders are valued, people live long. Very interesting. And it's got nothing to do with diet. I mean, there's going to be something there in the diet, but it's really about the more valuable you are, the more you live long because you're wanted. I don't need them, I've got Google. <laughs> no. There's wisdom that Google cannot give you, and it's in the elderly. That's where their honor lies. Isn't it? Okay. 1 Samuel 2 30. Wherefore the Lord your God of Israel saith, I said indeed that thy house and thy house of thy fathers should walk before me forever. But now the Lord says, Be it far from me. From them that honor me, I will honor. And they that despise me shall be lightly esteemed. Okay, so this is important. Honoring God is going to have God honoring you back. Romans 12. Let love be without dissimulation. Abhor that which is evil. Cleave to that which is good. Be kindly affectionate one to another with brotherly love. In honor, preferring one another. One of the newer translations says, esteem others more valuable than yourself. Isn't that a nice, what, what a powerful thought. If we all went around esteeming each other more than ourselves, guess what happens? we've become selfless. C.S. Lewis says this way, he says, being selfless is not, you know, it's, it's not um, thinking less of yourself. It's thinking about yourself less. Isn't that good? No, it's just shifting your focus onto people other than yourself. That's all it is. That's why I love that idea that Kian says, we're all connected. You, know, you really understand karma, he says. You realize life is giving you what you're giving it. And he practices that. It's beautiful. Practices honoring people. Okay. 2 Corinthians 8. For we aim at what is honorable, not only in the Lord's sight, but also in the sight of man. Isn't it? That's important. I know there are times where I think, well, I don't know that person such and such but I'll do it because they're judging God or they're judging, say, Christianity or judging spirituality by how I respond in this situation. 
1 Timothy 5, let the elders that rule well be counted worthy of double honour. Here's to throw a spanner in your idea of honour, by the way. The very use of this here, the, the Greek context of this, the Koine Greek, is payment. Pay. Elders are worth double pay. Double time. <laughs> now, bring that to honour your mother and father. What's that mean? That means when your parents get old, provide a place for them. You know, the granny flat. Provide a place for them and look after them. Isn't it? They're worth honour. They're worth being rewarded and paid back all those years of all those nappies and then all the schooling and all the food and clothes and everything. It's something we've lost in our culture, you know, when, when, we, just, when we just want to put them away somewhere. Now, I understand that it's not always possible to, to do that. But it, it's beautiful when, when we see it with um, Miriam, didn't we, Ian? You know, her son and daughter took her in after Neville died. They were joyful about it. We want you to come and live with us. Please, we've got room. Oh, she has felt so loved. It's honourable. Something really honourable about that. Okay. Before we close with the meditation, let's go to the back and read from Apocalypse Reveal in Heaven and Hell. Chris, would you, nice loud voice there, read for us? Okay, I, I feel like I want to get you a glass of water or something. Nice and loud, Chris. Apocalypse Reveal 249. Glory and honour. When ascribed to the Lord, mean that all truth and all good are His and from Him. Moreover, when the divine truth is treated oh, in the Word, it is called glory. And when the divine good is treated of it, it's called honour. Okay, so we're really getting a clue here about what honour is now. <laughs> honour is actually goodness. It's the same thing. You can't separate honour and goodness. Although you could say that honour is people's reaction to goodness, isn't it? Okay, so we say glory and honour be to God, isn't it? But what we're really saying is that God is light, glory. God is light, honour. God is good. And there's nothing evil in him. And the scripture says over and over again, glory and honour be to God. And so an acknowledgement of that, as a spiritual person, we acknowledge, well, I don't have anything light and down. I'm not an illuminated one, a light and downering inside me. I'm not a vessel or a, a, a source, a well of goodness. But I can be, when connected to the divine, wise and good. Acknowledging. Acknowledging the Lord is the source and we are the vessels. Uh, heaven and hell there, Chris 390. From this it may be inferred what subordinations in the heavens are. Oh, uh, before, sorry, before you go on, this passage here, Swedenborg's explaining how there are actually uh, different levels in heaven and there are different roles. People do get leadership roles. And again, it's not that they are dominating anyone, but the more they serve, the greater that role is, the more power and, and opportunity they're given. So subordinate, when he means subordinate here, it means that there are different levels. There are those who have leaders and those who are leaders in heaven. So keep, keep going. Uh, namely, that as anyone loves, esteems, and honors a use, he also loves, esteems, and honors a person with whom the use is connected. Also, that person is loved, esteemed, and honoured in the measure in which he ascribes the use to the Lord and not to himself. For to that extent, he is wise, and he uses, he performs. And the uses he performs, yeah. Uh, he performs from good. Spiritual love, esteem, and honour are nothing else than the love, esteem, and honour of the use in the person together with the honour to the person because of the use and not to honour the use because of the person. Moreover, one who regards men from spiritual truth regards them in no, in no other way for, for he sees one man to be like another whether in great 
very little dignity. The only person... Perceptible? Is that how you'd Perceptible it? difference being a difference in wisdom. And wisdom is loving use. That is, loving the good of a fellow citizen, of society, of one's country, and of the church. It is in the, this that love of the Lord takes up its abode because every good that is a good, of good use is from the Lord. And so also does love towards the neighbour because the neighbour is the good that is to be loved in a fellow citizen in society, in one's country and in the church and that is to be placed before them. Wow, that last sentence is, is so important too because we all know in the scriptures we're to love our neighbour, right? To love our neighbour. Well, who is my neighbour? One person asked Jesus. And Jesus tells a parable just to get that idea across. But the writings are so clear. The neighbour, any time you see goodness in someone, that goodness is the neighbour. Oh, why it keeps ringing. It never happens. So, that's what we're to love. Love the neighbour, love the goodness you see in others. It doesn't mean that I go around indiscriminately um, loving everyone, but I love a person as I build the good up in them and build the use up in them. Isn't that wonderful? And when you think about heaven too, we're not envious of somebody who's, that we're subordinate to. We're grateful because whoever is above us in, in heaven or a spiritual place is rendering a use to us that they have such a love and ability to do. And we're just grateful for that service and that use. So opposite to here on earth. Someone, you know, to be subordinate to someone here on earth, it, it can be quite an offensive thing, isn't it? Particularly if that person you're subordinate to is an obnoxious person, isn't it? Who wants to be subordinate to, to someone who's obnoxious? Dictating and telling you and pushing you around. We don't like that, it's not right. But in heaven they rejoice at those who have been put over them because of the use, the good. So we're getting an idea here that honour is none other than goodness itself being useful, being, being exercised. That's what we should admire, that's what we should honour. Whenever we see good in each other, that's what we should admire. That's honourable and we should be honourable towards each other in that. Amen. Now one last reading before we say the, the meditation here. On the card, it's also on the screen. This really nails it for us. By giving the Lord glory and honour. Worship. You know, it's, not, it's more than a song. I'll bring you more than a song, Lord, because a song is not what you require. To give the Lord glory and honour. It means nothing else. Uh, sorry, nothing else is meant in the word than to acknowledge and confess all truth and all good is from him and that he alone is God for he has glory from the divine truth and honor from the divine good when the divine truth is treated of in the word it's called glory and when divine good is treated of it's called honor isn't that beautiful so why is God honor if I ask you the question now hopefully you've you know, hopefully you struggled with it like I did what is honor but now when I ask you the question, what is honour, you can say, it is the goodness of God. Honour. And what is honourable is the goodness of God. Amen? Yes. Let's read the meditation here together. Open up. We'll close the meditation and a benediction. And so Together. I seek to be a person of virtue, principle, and honour. I treat others well, regardless of their response. I seek internal integrity over the praises of men. I do what is right without seeking external rewards. I seek to please the Lord above my own pleasure. I am thankful, Lord, for the gift of honour. It teaches me to choose good and righteous actions because they are of God and from God. Amen. Just read something out for our sisters. This is for our sisters um, in the world here. When God created women, he was working late on the sixth day. An angel came by and asked, why spend so much time on her? 
The Lord answered, Have you seen all the specifications I've had to meet to shape her? She must function in all kinds of situations. She must be able to embrace several kinds, kids at the same time. And kind. Have a hug that can heal anything, from a bruised knee to a broken heart. She must do all this with only two hands. She cures herself when sick and can work 18 hours a day. The angel was impressed. Just two hands, impossible. And this is the standard model? The angel came closer and touched the woman. But you have made her so soft, Lord. She is soft, said the Lord, but I have made her strong. You can't imagine what she can endure and overcome. Can she think? The angel asked. The Lord answered, not only can she think, she can reason and negotiate. The angel touched her cheeks. Lord, it seems this creation is leaking. You have put too many burdens on her. She is not leaking. It is a tear. The Lord corrected the angel. What's it for? asked the angel. The Lord said, tears are her way of expressing her grief, her doubts, her love, her loneliness and her suffering and her pride. This made a big impression on the angel. Lord, you are a genius. You thought of everything. A woman is indeed marvellous. The Lord said, indeed she is. She has strength that amazes a man. She can handle trouble and carry heavy burdens. She holds happiness, love and opinions. She smiles when she feels like screaming. She sings when she feels like crying. Cries when happy and laughs when afraid. She fights for what she believes in. Her love is unconditional. Her heart is broken. When her next of kin, a friend dies, and she finds strength to get on with life. The angel asks, so she is a perfect being? The Lord replied, no. She has just one drawback. She often forgets what she is worth. Oh, thank you. And that's the women in my life that made me who I am. That's beautiful. Uh, the Bible said, he who finds a wife finds a good thing. Isn't it, Brian? He who finds a wife finds a good thing. Amen. Let's close with a new commandment. <clears throat> you, the Lord keep you, the Lord make his face to shine upon you, and be gracious unto you. The Lord lift up his countenance upon you, and grant you his everlasting peace.